Hey guys, welcome back to this week's vlog. We're going to be going to see Steve and Joanne from Set Up To Worship, who set up my guitars. Um, I've, I've got two guitars that need to have a little bit of a, a look at and make sure that they're altered so that they're working as they should be, including a clean up, making sure that all the little dings in the frets are sorted out, and generally making sure that the guitar is in perfect working order so that it can sound amazing when I play it on stage. So I thought I'd take you to see them and so you can see some of the process and they're going to be documenting some of what they do and why they do what they do as well. So I hope you enjoy this vlog. Daring to be more than ordinary I was born to be brave, born to be brave Taking the plunge into vulnerability I was born to be brave, born to be brave all right, so what I've done is, first of all, gone through um, restoring your frets mm -hmm. because there was a lot of fret wear. There were little divots, a big, quite a big divot. Big one, yeah. Know. So um, I start off with uh, 400 grit, that's 600, 400 grit uh, wet and dry mm -hmm. sandpaper. And, and I just do this backwards and forwards until all the, the um, divots are gone. And then I go through 600 grit, 800, 1200, yeah. and 2000 to smooth them out and round them so the, the shape of my fingers will re-crown, it won't flatten them, so it'll re-crown as I do it because the frets are quite um, soft for me to do that. So then to finish it off, I use um, this a magnificent steel wool, or wire wool you call it, um, made here in the UK, it's Liberon. Yeah. And it's um, triple, quadruple O, and it's really fine. It's known as jewelers, yeah. and so that gives the final um, just shine and gets in. If there's any marks from the wet and dry sandpaper on the frets, it got, gets it off. And it also the, the this if there's any lifting fret edges, which we get quite a bit of over here because of the. The, the central heating and yeah, all yeah, that kind of stuff and you, your frets are quite sharp on the edge mm -hmm. um, well then the, the steel wool will go underneath the frets and so that's how I, I know whether or not there are left and there is there is some they're quite sharp so Steve will work on those for you um, so that gets all the grit off and then um, to finish off this process on the frets, we use um, a metal cleaner, uh -huh. and Auto Glim is our, made here in the UK, is our big go-to. I just put it in another a drawer, another jar, and we just put a little bit of Auto Glim on the frets. This will this will make it um, easier to bend. Um, and in the factory, they only go to 600 uh, grit sandpaper and then steel wool so you're actually going to get frets that are more shiny and oh, more, yes. more bendable than when it first came out of the factory. And uh, so then to get the, um, the, the metal cleaner off we just use lighter fluid Yep. which is called shellite here over here there's the metal cleaner off and now I'm going to um, put a little bit of this this is magnificent it's it's called F1 oil by music nomad care and we don't use uh, lemon oil because the the acidic base of lemon oil actually is not good for the fingerboard see the the caramel colors coming out um, you can see it and the, the lemon oil actually can dehydrate the fingerboard instead of rehydrate it over time. Then I massage this in and this is where the prayer, thank you Lord, mm. thank you Jesus, thank you Lord that this wood was created by you and we call back into play the sound of heaven that the DNA, your DNA in this wood comes back and that as Pete plays you will hear the sound of heaven coming from it that there'll be new songs, different songs, heavenly songs. Let everything that has breath give praise to the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So then we, I just wipe the oil off the frets. So Steve can put the strings on. 
so they won't be affected by the oils. I love this. I just the re whole restoration of frets is. Um, people ask me whether I get bored because I do it the same thing all the time, but I love it. It's just seeing a guitar come back and the potential that that this guitar has now because the foundations of it are right. Stunned by your love. Sounds good. Okay, so the first thing I do, having already rebuilt the nut, okay, so I've made it all physically part of it. The shelf in here, we'll get to that in a minute, but the first thing I do is remove the saddle. We have all of these marks, so that's got to go. Stanley blade. This is just a resin. It's called Tusk TOSQ, it's resin. Um, and it, it, as you can see, it abrades very easily. So over the course of time, you end up with deep gouges in your saddle. And um, you must have the string sit at one point very proudly in order to maintain your intonation. So bellying are all choking devices. They're shutting the guitar down rather than releasing the sound, which is what we've got to do. It's, this is a stretched membrane. It's a, it's a it's a soundboard, so we want to get it to move, get it more out of the valve, so everywhere the string touches must be restored to one common point. And of course, yes, this is, it's not taking much off, but it's shaving, but it, over time it will lower the saddle and we would replace it. Mm. Often with piezos though, uh, piezo pickups, it's this little device yeah. in here, yeah. I will often take intentionally a half a mil off the bottom of the saddle below the required action and I will physically glue some rock maple to the bottom and what this actually does where piezos tend to be very peaky um, and very sort of very peaky uh, as a microphone very toppy and peaky the wood uh, actually believe it or not actually pulls the, the, the sort of glissy peaky sound off the top end of these um, saddles and bone as well and gives it a more of a a mid-range or a glowy type tone and and that is a little bit more gross which allows you to get a lot more volume and you don't have to you don't have to really worry too much about the t getting too toppy and brittle it just seems warmer and richer um, in this instance um, the tusk saddle itself um, is a dampener almost all every time I use bone or there's bone in there I'll often put that shelf wherever there's a piezo and it just really helps calm things down a little bit dynamically hmm. Um, without really affecting too much of the acoustic sound. Um, so a lot of people also say to me, you know, if I put a pickup under saddle pickup, is that going to change my guitar sound? Yes, it will, because you're adding another dampening device. So you're adding another piece of interference that prevents the string from passing to the face. Of course. So each of these coupling areas where things are coupled, uh, there's leakage. Is it dramatic? No, it's subtle, but you can't say to somebody, oh, it won't change the sound at all. Mm. Yes, it will change the sound. You will lose a little bit of bottom. You definitely will lose a little bit of focus on the top. Mids, not much. Guitars, acoustic guitars are inherently mid-range. So that's that done. Now we're gonna clean it up totally so that we have, we have it absolutely flat. As I said, Pete, under normal circumstances, if we weren't flying around, running around, I would hand make you a brand new nut. And that would be my mission. But in this case, we're gonna do second best, which will be a lot better than what you've currently got. And the more money you spend on a guitar, the more due diligent you must be in maintaining it regularly. At least if you're on the road or you're recording or playing a lot, I would suggest no later than six months. So I always say to clients, Onset of winter or early winter, onset of summer or early summer, they're the times you need to bring the guitar to me so I can prepare you for that season and then the transition season to the next. I'm gonna put the strings on first to see what nut height we're dealing with before we lock it away. Okay, so at this point, um, I load up the bridge with all the strings. First. So I'm just going to position, I'm not going to glue this nut in yet. I want to see what's actually happening before I lock it in. Uh, and we'll 
we'll do that. I'll just pop that there for the moment. So loop and bend. Slack, just a bit of slack. Left hand, right hand, it's all to do with the right if you're right handed. And you just simply grab under the string and thumb around the top, pull back. And the minute you pull back, what I do is I go into push down and pull up. So I create a tension load straight away to the post and then I lock it. And that locks the whole string in immediately. Yeah. So there's no need for any over and under curl. And the beauty of this is if you break a string or you wish to change them, they just decoil straight off. Um, it's just important to keep some tension so that you actually compress the string to the post. Gibsons tend to have a very short post on their acoustics, so sometimes you have to run backwards. So just make sure it runs underneath the string like that. And at this stage I will pop the nut in usually and just have a little look at what's going on. And just see how much leverage it's going to take for me to tune that string. I've already made the decision. It's, um, I'm going to decoil that and I'm going to shorten up the string. So you can do this. People sort of think, oh no, it's, I can't. Yes, you can. You can just shorten it up and do another loop and bend. That's pretty much it. It's so most important is to bend to the post. All right, and then wind on. And that's enough. You don't need to have tons of string and you never beehive strings. You never load it up to the point where you end up with this beehive. It will never stay in tune. You've got to lock it into the steel shaft and, and that will stabilize the, tune, the, the, the strings very quickly when we go through a stretch. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. Once you bend it up, you grab your side cutters, flat side down on top, that's it. Cut and discard, done. And the beauty of this method is that I can get you on stage, to be frank, I can get you on stage 15 minutes out from stage. I can restring, do a three stretch stage through, which I'll demonstrate soon. And um, you're gonna go out there and, and play. You're not gonna have any more issues with your tuning than you would normally have tweaking between two or three songs or, you know, if all guitarists at the end of a couple of songs will do a little, you know, mute on the tuner and check their tuning. It's, it's, it's what we do. Mm. Um, the freak out, of course, is, oh, good grief, if they're going to be new, I'm going to spend the whole set yeah. tuning mid-song. Yeah. That's not what happens on loop and band at all. The whole process is instantaneous. Um, there's no way that that string can slip, so I have locked it. Plug straight into the strobe. This thing's accurate to one one thousandth of a semitone. I've seen them before, they're brilliant. So this is made by Peterson and they only make tuners, guitar tuners, strobe tuners, they're the, they're the masters. And I've been using strobe tuners for 40 years. There's nothing better. They're incredibly efficient, very accurate. And this company have developed what we call sweet tunings, which often compensates for the Pythagorean tick. Um, as we know that the, the tempered system has a failing in that it can't be 100% in tune. Well, these guys have developed sweet tunings, which is slightly off, slightly offset, but gives the guitar, when you engage the sweet tunings on them, and there are 50 of them in here, gives the guitar an incredible, an incredible musicality, a much more musical sound. So it's rough, but what we do now is go into play position and literally at the octave, I will, I'll sort that out in a minute. I will literally pull at the octave, thumb it up and roll. Do the same, thumb it up and roll. Thumb up, roll, thumb up and roll, right across. <coughs> now I will retune. And you can see how much stretch I've pulled out already. And it's really important to, to stretch. You've got to do this, otherwise you will have a nightmare set. I do this three times. Fourth, I do the final tune. So that's once. We go again. Again, thumb up and pull and roll. Thumb up and roll backwards and forwards. It's like a trampolining type effect, just a bouncing of the string. And that'll bed and lock it in here and lock it in here. So we're now down to just a half tone drop. So we're getting as much of that play stretch out straight away. Yep. Here we go. Treble strings will be mostly the problem. One more time. One more. One more. 
too. So that nut now is releasing because we've got the string sitting on top of the nut, not down into the deep. So you can hear it's a lot more sustainable. Everything's holding on. We've basically got it in, but now we, we, we go in to do the hard work. We go in and look at all the angles, we look at all the heights, and we see exactly what's going on. But the nut is restored. We've got this these strings now taking off from the leading edge, and, we, and we've got flesh. We can see some flesh, maybe a little bit lower on the B. So I will work with that uh, out on the wheel and roll that off and get that B and E released more, a little more on the G, but I'm pretty happy with the... Um, the E, A and the D, so it's these three I'm going to work on, uh, which is why we didn't glue down, we just basically settled it. Um, now I'm going to have a look at what sort of action. So the first thing I do is, now that we're in concert, we sight the neck and we have a look. This is the only way to sight it, you do not look from the body, you look straight down. The string is a plumb line and the neck is nice and straight. It's just loading a little bit now and I can see that I'm going to definitely just give that truss rod a tickle. Yeah, it's loading now. It's just starting to belly in the center a little bit under load, which is good. Um, I would not at this stage rush anywhere near the saddle until I've, I'm happy that I've got the truss where I want it. So I'm just going to tickle that up a little bit. Is the 516, sorry, is the beautiful Gibson number. So I'm just going to pop that you know, off out of the way. This is to amaze me. Every time he does that, plays that E5 chord. The E5's oh, the killer. Mate. We'll explain about that in a minute, but that's e the killer five. chord. Three open strings and three fretted strings between the seventh and ninth will tell you if you have intonation issues, believe me. Um, so righty tidy, which is towards me, it's a screw thread, so I want to straighten it, so I'm gonna go righty tidy, lefty loosey. I want to tighten it. And we've got we've got plenty there. There's enough there to load this neck up. There we go. A little bit more. Um, I really want this thing to bounce and I want to drive this guitar a lot harder and get it to earn its pay. It's got to work. Still going. So we put a capo on now. We've got this, we can play these weird chords. We've got tune, we've got intone, we've got release. The action's gorgeous. You can just get into it now. Capo at the seventh, the real test. working, the strings are loaded, everything's translating as it should be. No high or low frets. Ready for your hit song? Uh, and so Or oh, something, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. That to me is what it's all about. You're all called creatives, you're Levites, you're, and you want more, and God wants to give you more. And this is the pragmatic approach to keeping your sonic sword constantly sharp and mm. ready to receive the great worship songs that heaven's already written. And, and in my view, you'll receive them. So mm. that's it. So guys, there's a little bit of behind the scenes of why it's important to set up the guitar. Um, I am so grateful for Steve and Joanne and what they have done to my guitars. They sound amazing. I'm super, super happy with them already. Had a little play with the Gibson, the J45, uh, and just, it sounds alive. The sustain is like incredibly long now, and I can't wait to be able to tour with it very, very soon. So why don't you guys, if you like this video, hit the like button and of course, subscribe subscribe to the channel I would love that and if you haven't already why don't you check out patreon as well our patreon page is below um, and I'd love you to find out a little bit about what patreon is and how to get involved in making what I do as pyramid park something that's sustainable and long term anyway thanks so much for watching and I look forward to sharing new stuff with you next week take care bye bye